Comparing partnership versus S-corporation tax consequences problem two. Potato, an individual, is a 20% owner of Starch LLC. This year, Potato was allocated $45,000 of ordinary income from Starch LLC, $1,000 of tax-exempt interest income, and $2,000 of non-deductible expenses. Potato also received a $10,000 distribution from Starch LLC this year. At the beginning of the year, Starch LLC had outstanding debt of $100,000. At the end of the year, the entity's outstanding debt increased to $130,000. If Starch LLC is taxed as a partnership and her partnership interest basis at the beginning of the year is $30,000, determine Potato's tax basis and her partnership interest at year end. If Starch LLC is taxed as an S corporation and her basis in her S corporation stock at the beginning of the year is $10,000, determine Potato's tax basis and her stock at year end. We've got a lot going on here, but actually this problem is not too bad. The key is that you make sure that you watch the partnership tax general concepts problems first, and then you watch the S corporation tax concepts general concepts videos as well. Then when you do this, it's, it makes it a lot simpler. We've really got two different questions that we're being asked about. I'll call them variation one and variation two. And what you're gonna see is that what would happen or what would the uh, basis, what would Potato's basis in um, the interest be, ownership interest be, if it's an LLC tax as a partnership, and then what would it be if it's an S corporation, okay? And we also change the amounts, by the way, if the beginning of the year is $30,000 and $10,000. That's really all that's changing around, so just, just keep that in mind. So let's first start by doing variation one, okay? And variation one assumes that it's an LLC tax as a partnership, tax as a partnership, and also that the initial basis is $30,000. So we're gonna need to go through all the facts again and basically adjust the basis for what it would be. Now remember the biggest distinction between entities, taxes, partnerships, and S corporations. There's a lot of distinctions, but the biggest one is that you're allowed to use liabilities, the portion of your liabilities responsible in your basis, which can affect losses, which can affect the amount of distributions you can take, things like that. We saw another problem where it actually did affect the uh, losses and you saw a different amount of loss, um, pretty substantial amount difference in loss for one year versus um, when it's a um, when it's a partnership, entity tax as a partnership versus an entity tax as, a, as an S corporation. So here, we're just starting with the LLC, then we'll do variation two on the other side with an S corporation with a basis, initial basis of um, $10,000. So let me put that down too. And we can actually do both of these together. Let's just do both of them together. This will make it a lot easier. So the first thing is we go through the information, 20% owner. This year, Potato was allocated $45,000 of ordinary income. So the first question is, do we increase for the share of ordinary income? And the answer is yes, for both. For both the LLC and for the S Corp, we do the same adjustment. The idea is that for these basis adjustments, it's very, very much the same for both entities, for partnership and S-corporation. And that makes sense because remember that a partnership and S-corporation both have one level of tax, C-corporation has two levels, and what makes sure that there's only one level of tax? We, we have the items flow through to the owners, we allocate the items to the owners, and then also there's a mechanism in place to ensure that you're not going to have double tax. And that is by doing this basis calculation each year. So when you sell the interest, you're basically not double counting certain things. Okay. The next item. So that takes care of the $45,000. I'm going to underline it when I'm done of ordinary income from, from starch LLC. What about the thousand dollars of tax exempt interest? What about that? Do we, do we adjust for that? And the answer is yes. We adjust both, both of them. For this number and the idea here is like, well why do we increase for tax exempt interest i thought it's not taxable and you're right we don't it's not taxable to the entity nor is it taxable to potato but the idea is that think about it the perfect example is if you receive interest right actual money from the state of um florida and that is non-taxable under the tax law you still have economic value. So if you receive $1,000 of tax-exempt interest during the year, 
that's still economic value to you. So that means that your interest is going up. Your partnership is going up by $1,000. It's just not taxable to you. If we don't increase the basis by $1,000, when you sell your partnership interest, you're going to have a, that's going to create $1,000 more value that will be taxed. And then therefore you will be taxed on the tax exempt interest. You see that? So we do have to adjust it. So we just did that. We adjusted for the tax exempt interest income. The next thing is the $2,000 of non-deductible expenses. Do we need to subtract that away? Yes, for both of them, for both LLC and for um, the S corporation interest. And the idea here is similar to the tax exempt. This does not allow a deduction. And if we do not adjust for this in the basis, then we basically give someone a deduction by not taking this into account, by not subtracting it away. Okay, that's $2,000. Okay, Potato also receives a $10,000 distribution. Okay, also receives a $10,000 distribution. So do distributions reduce basis? Yes, for both of them. So the $10,000 distribution is going to reduce for both. And when, what you might have noticed in my videos is that we always consider the distributions last. And that's because you'll see that it could have different consequences depending on what the numbers are. For this problem, I'm going to tell you that we can consider this right now. And the reason why is because the number is not going to matter because we have enough ordinary income to offset the other items. Okay, so we've gone through all those items. Looks like we're almost done. And then we're also told that Starch has $100,000 of outstanding debt. At the end of the year, the out entity's outstanding debt increases to $130,000. So the question becomes... Um, What do we do with respect to um, the liabilities? Well, the difference, and this is this is this is looking to the facts. The difference between this thirty thousand dollar LLC basis and the ten thousand dollar S corporation basis is if you take the beginning basis, right? The beginning, sorry, beginning liability of hundred thousand dollars, and Potato owns twenty percent. If you take hundred thousand times twenty percent you get $20,000. That is that difference. That's where that's coming from. So what I'm telling you is when I tell you that the outside basis or outside basis just means the partnership interest basis, by the way, when I tell you the partnership interest basis for potato is $30,000 at the beginning of the year, 10,000 for S corp, that's taking into account the difference there. The 20,000 is for the liability. So if it went up by $30,000, then the question becomes, is that going to affect S corp? And the answer is no. This is our calculation for S corp. What about partnership? Yes. If we go up by $30,000, we need to increase our liability. Now, the reason why we did 20% of the liabilities is because if we're not told specifically how to allocate the liabilities, we normally just use the profit loss ratio to do the allocation. So if I tell you someone's a 20% owner, a 30% owner, 50% owner, you use a per the owner ownership percentage. Because that, that normally means that in addition to being a 20% owner, or they're a 20%, sorry, not in addition, but what it means when you say someone's a 20% owner, they're a 20% owner in the capital, profits, and losses. So they're 20% owner in capital, profits, and losses of the business. That's what that means. And the idea is that when we allocate liabilities, we usually use the profit and loss ratios. So if they're both 20%, depending on the facts and circumstances and what kind of liabilities, some will use profits, some will use loss ratios. But if they're the same, it doesn't make a difference, right? If it's 20% for profits and losses, you're going to use 20%. So that's why we're using 20%, by the way. So for the increase in liabilities, because again, the beginning basis, right, the $30,000 includes the first hundred, we need to do, remember, we don't do this for S corporation because we don't take into account liabilities. We do personal loan liabilities, but we keep that on the side, not from the stock. Because that's what we're doing. We're determining the S corporation stock basis at the end of the year. Okay, so we do add, let me actually give myself some more room here. We do add to this the increase of potato share of liabilities for the year. And the way we calculate that is we start, we take the new balance, $130,000. Let me, let me erase some stuff. It's going to make it a little confusing if I get too close. Let's do this from on the side over here. So we increase we add the increase of potatoes liabilities for the year. The new amount is $130,000, right, of liabilities of the, of the, for the entire partnership. 
for LLC, the old or the beginning balance is $100,000 for the entire LLC, that's what we're told. So that equals an increase of $30,000 for the entire LLC. If we multiply by 20%, which is what we've been doing at the beginning, right, that equals $6,000. So we have a $6,000 increase in the amount of liabilities that Potato has. So we add $6,000. We add $6,000 there, okay? So now we calculate the amounts, and what you're going to see is that one number is a lot bigger. For the LLC, 30,000 plus 45,075 plus 1 is 76, minus 2, that's 74, minus 10 is um, 64, plus 6 is $70,000. For the S corporation, 10,000 plus 45,000, actually, let me, let me rewrite this number, make it clearer, sorry, $70,000. For the S corporation, 10 plus 45 is 55, plus 1 is 56, minus 2 is um, 54, minus 10 is 44. So we have $44,000 here. And then what is the difference? Why are they so much different? We had most, almost everything the same. Well, remember initially that there's a $20,000 difference and there's a $6,000 difference for the liability increase. So it should be a $26,000 increase, is there? Is 70,000, let me make that clear to 70, is 70,000, um, $26,000 greater, or what's 70,000 70, minus 44,000? 26,000. So that's the $20,000 difference for the liability. Remember this? And then the $6,000 we just computed. So that's why the numbers are different because there's $26,000 difference due to the liabilities. So those are the numbers. We have a $70,000 basis if it was an LLC, $44,000 basis if it was an S corporation. Again, that's why there's a difference in the facts of me telling you $30,000 is the beginning basis for the LLC and 10,000 for the S Corp because the idea is um, if you consider the $100,000 of debt and you take 20% of that, then I adjusted that for you because if you're rolling over each year, that would already have that amount in there. So we adjust for the $6,000. Now, um, in terms of what's going on, you know, looking at these numbers, you're like, okay, well, what, what, what's better? Obviously having a, a higher basis is better because as you've seen in these videos, where you have losses, remember there's a loss limitation where you're limited to the basis. And also distributions, the idea of a distribution is you're not gonna be taxed on distribution, cash distribution for S corporation or LLC if you have enough basis. So having a higher basis is always better. I mean, if it's the cost of having you know higher income, that's obviously a thing, but for purposes of S corporations versus LLCs, that's not an issue. So this is a big advantage of being an LLC over an S corporation, because as you see here, same exact facts, but LLC has a higher um, basis amount. And ultimately, economically, yes, the S corporation takes on the liabilities, but all these LLC owners are still protected. They're all still limited owners, but they still have that share of liabilities. So you see there's a benefit there in that regard. All right, so with that, make sure you go back over this. Make sure you go back all, all through the S corporation partnership videos. Very important, very important items.